So, so super, super simple. So if we take our conventional stance, we have our lead side that's in, in line with the leg in front, and we have a term that we, we call twisted lead. Twisted lead refers to twisting the rear shoulder to be at least equal to, if not surpassing, the conventional lead shoulder, right? And so the idea here is this. If I'm working and I'm throwing my jabs and whatever else, the, the, the most difficult aspect of entering is getting that axial turn and getting my crossover. Most people fight and end up being here or they're retreating or they start whipping that lead hand like they're swinging a stick and it's very, very difficult for them to get the rotation. So if we just wait for the ideal circumstance and then try to rotate and throw, it's super tough unless we're a very, very skilled boxer. So the idea with twisted lead is that rather than only rotating when we throw across, we start to use that motion either as a feint, as a slip, or as a, as a setup for other strikes. So rather than saying, I will rotate when I throw across only, I now say, well, I'm jabbing, maybe I cross with very little rotation, and then throughout I start to look to see, can I just test, can I see what his response will be? I bait him, I bring my rotation, I come back, I try to slip past and so on. So this is what we're going to do for this row. Our conventional response against the jab, jab is always thrown with the front hand. Generally, we perform a catch. So a catch is usually done with the back hand, it's a parry to the inside doesn't need to be a large scooping action, it's really just a displacement and ideally I'm really thinking about moving my chin out of the line and replacing it with my shoulder and that hand becomes almost like a glancing ramp rather than necessarily a hard stuff. Sometimes in, in sport of boxing when the guy throws a jab you'll see people that do this, they, they stop it with their glove uh, full out, which is fine, in sport you got a large glove, you have a bit of pad, he has pad, it's alright, but street wise that's not so good. If it doesn't end up being a fist and you didn't see that there was something else, uh, and, you, and you obstruct it, aside from being force on force, when we have that reliance, we tend to minimize evasion. So I'd always rather prioritize evasion and have this just as, a, as an incidental assistance. I, I often use the analogy of a, of a stick when we're walking on a tightrope. The stick is there to help us with balance. We don't need to touch the ground in order to have balance. Right? We're just using it as, a, as, a, as an extension of our, our body awareness. So when that comes in, I don't necessarily need to touch it. I'm just kind of extending it as a counterbalance of my motion. And that's a conventional jab catch. The second thing we're going to look for, majority of the time we'll be doing a catch against the jab, but the second thing we're going to look for is to see, can I twist my lead in and parry just in case with this. But if he's throwing that jab, he's throwing, I've got my jab, boom, he's throwing, boom, and then I slip. So I'm liter I can guide it, but I'm literally focusing on the evasion over the actual deflection. And you can go slowly, you want to see that you have your basic catch, you have your evasion, and then I slip to the inside just to see what it feels like. We're going to take time, sweep back and forth. Take it easy. Is it okay. So super What's simple. So off of a jab catch, standard counters that we have, we have a, a jab counter jab drill. So when this is done, this is the idea. I catch, and then on the half beat, usually right after the tap, I throw my counter jab. So as a ca the counter jabber has to have a lot more control than the jabber because very often if he's giving me good stimuli, he's extending into a jab, the more he commits, the harder it is for him to respond authentically to a half beat counter jab. The artificiality of the drill is that I know the jab is coming, I'm isolated, so it's very easy to score it and to be very quick, but the danger is we start to become almost like, you know, point karate where we're not moving or coming in like this. It's always better to have a good evasion and then to come back from the evasion with the counter. So you want to be careful, he's giving me a jab and I start doing this. Again, it's only working because I know he's exactly throwing the jab right here. I try to do that in the, you know, the confines of sparring. I'm not investing in movement. I'm too close. And instead of throwing it right here, he throws a slight looping hook. My hand misses and I volunteered. I've, I've impaled myself on the punch, right? So no matter what happens, he throws jab, I pop off to the side. He throws him here, right? I'm always prioritizing that. And then, boom, I look for a counter, right? Bam, and a counter jab. But I don't, again, I'm being merciful. And being, you know, kind to him, bam, and I go for a counter. Now, second alternative, as opposed to doing catch, counter, jab, is I can do catch, counter, cross. Because tonight our, our whole goal is twisted lead, what I really want to see is this. Off my counter cross, I want a full rotation extension. So in order to go through his head, I want to go past the, the mantle of the shoulder. So I take it over here just so you see. So he throws jab, I can counter jab, bam, or I counter cross. Counter jab, counter cross. Counter jab, counter cross. And that's the key thing, is, that, is the axial rotation of the shoulder. So I want to see, boom, slip away, or boom, counter cross. Nice and easy. Does that make sense? So, three options now. We're going to add a third. So, I can counter the catch with a counter jab. I can catch and cross past. 
or now I can slip inside with my twisted lead, and what I'm going to look for is a shovel hook or a slap. I would normally open handedly. I don't want to go to the crotch, but it can be into the body. It can be under the, under the ribs. Your choice. So your default is always a catch, and I can come after. But I can slip in here, or I can slip in and hit, catch, right? boom, counter jab, as I wish. If you authentic jab, you always want to have authentic. Boom, bam, I cross. Boom, bam, I pop inside. So I'm just looking to see what, what feels right in any given context. What feels good. Right, you can also, sometimes when you slip inside, you can get away with Backhands that I often use here, here, oh, there's one here, whatever you wish. Nice and tight.